my name is Brooke Hales, and I decided to watch the movie um, Real Women Have Curves. So it's centered around the main character, Anna. She has her mom, her dad, um, her abuelo who comes into the story enough, and her older sister, Estella. And they come from a strong Latino background. It is insinuated that their parents are immigrants. And they live in a home together and um, come from a very, very collectivistic culture. You know, everything is for the family. Everything you do is for the family. And the mom is especially traditional because um, she just really tries to place her own upbringing onto her daughter's. And she kind of considers the older sister Estella a lost cause in terms of, you know, finding her husband and getting her married and just setting her up and domesticating her and just having her own set, herself set in that way. But she's compensated for that in having her own little business. Whereas Anna is a graduating high school senior and she has actually been even more Americanized than I would say her older sister, um, which could just have to do with personality in the first place. She has more of an abrasive, um, challenging personality when it comes to these things because she's just, throughout the whole movie, just grasping for more of a sense of independence and just having her identity apart from her family, which is very westernized concept in an individualistic um, society she went to she made it into the high school I guess one of them in like Beverly Hills and so um how that works in with her back with her family however is that like she wants to go to college she wants to do all these things and like I said just find her identity outside her family and her mom even just um claims that her going off to college would be a direct threat to her um, whole family and keeping them united and keeping them together. So her parents, but especially her mom, insists that she works at the sister's shop. And which honestly is kind of just a sweatshop. And Anna even calls that out, but kind of disrespectfully um, because she just associates all that her family does with as low as you can get in terms of life goals and she you can tell she's just really struggling with um having any level of like appreciation for what the things that her family does together or like their culture um so yeah that's kind of the general summary I think in terms of ratio um ratio <laughs> racial stereotypes I really appreciated the wide variety of perspectives and personalities and even status that you can hold in society um, just within Latino culture because you have the family and you have the very, very traditional parents. You have um, the sister who is more working with the within the balance of she does have an appreciation for her heritage and she's makes the, um, she has like this outburst where she's even talks like how proud she is of what she does, even if Anna only sees this as dirty labor that they're like getting um, skimmed off for, I guess. And then there's Anna, who's more of um, just the younger, like I said, Americanized Latina who wants more of that American dream and within like going to college, having a boyfriend, having more sexual freedom. And um, the parents, like I said, just very traditional. And then there's her teacher, who is Latino, he's played by George Lopez, um, her, um, he does not, I just noticed that he doesn't have, like, a strong accent, and honestly, none of them do it while speaking English, except for the parents and the grandpa. Whenever the sisters and him speak English, I just noticed that, um, that wasn't a thing that the producers enforced in terms of the stereotype of you either have a foreign accent or you have this sort of urban accent if you're like Latino so I thought that was very interesting a little refreshing and it's also for me I thought um, it was kind of cool the fact that he of all people he was the English teacher um, Mr. Guzman 
Kirk Guzman. And yeah, I just, that was just some, a point that I noticed in terms of racial stereotypes. And then there's even um, another character who doesn't get a lot of screen time, but I still found it very, very significant is, um, so Estella really struggles with the rent and being able to, um, cause she also struggles with her staff. So she doesn't have enough staff to keep making the dresses to send into Bloomingdale's. So the company that ships out her dresses, um, Anna convinces her to go and confront them and ask for more time. And so they get to the office and lo and behold, the manager and the person that she's very scared of is another Latina woman and speaks Spanish and everything and even makes claims along the lines of, um, I've thought to help you out with this connection in the first place to help women like us and that therefore that's insinuated Latinas um but she's still like very much business-minded very much harsh on the deadlines just what many people would consider um a word not appropriate for me to say um and she's just very on top of her stuff and doesn't let commonality and culture um sway her decision making in that time so I also thought that was very interesting because she was still like um holding her accountable and even called her out to saying like help yourself by getting it in on time I can only help you so much which I know that that can trigger different responses from people in terms of um how you necessarily help your community but again a specific perspective that alters from others um, and differs from others. And so, um, that was pretty, yeah, that was the, probably the most significant, um, other than the teacher that I noticed in terms of ratio, ratio, racial stereotypes. And as for gender, well, I just really appreciated, it was hard to hear a lot of things just because with the mom being so traditional and so stuck in her ways, she could say some really nasty, horrible things to her daughters about their bodies, um, about their sexuality, um, and there's just the things that she held as important. You know, for her, it was be skinny and then you'll be beautiful and then you can get a husband and then once you have them, um, you will have like been taught by then how to um, uphold a household, how to clean, how to cook, how to take care of your husband. But essentially what she told them, as long as you're fat, you can't do any of those things. And um, just about all of the Latina characters are um, relatively curvy women. And so um, one of the points that I thought was, um, even though it, is very it's kind of challenging to conservative belief is when she's kind of sneaking around with this boy from high school who's not from her world at all he's is from Beverly Hills and he is um a white teenager male and um when he was she was just talking to him one time and she was talking about the things that her mom would say to her he says to her in response um you're not fat you're beautiful and um, that phrase in itself bothers me because it's just for so long the word fat has just taken on such a negative connotation um, rather than, I guess, just a descriptor word for body type. And I don't really know if there will ever be a day where that can, like, fully be taken back or reversed, but... um. I think the rest, even though in that moment that wasn't really addressed in terms of that phrasing, um, but within the rest of the movie, that was, I think that was challenged in action and portrayal because as this um, review pointed out, it's by Roger, Roger Ebert. He, I guess he has his own website and he said, um, talking about the quote, you're not fat, you're beautiful. Um, he says, she is both. Real women have curves. Uh, real women have curves. Doesn't argue that Anna is beautiful on the inside, um, but that she is beautiful inside and out. 
Love handles, big boobs, round cheeks, and all. Turn on the lights, she shyly tells Jimmy. I want you to see me, see this is what I look like. Anna has learned to accept herself. It is more than her mother can do. And that was also referring to the scene that I'm talking about that um, conservatives might struggle with a little bit is um, the scene where she sleeps with the boy for the first time. And he um, went to turn off the lights, and so she asked to turn them back on because he want, she wanted him to see her for all that she was and her body type and um, recognize her, I guess, as still desirable. So, again, even with differences in opinions and beliefs in that area, maybe, I still thought that was really, really cool. Um, it's a very subtle way to address that in terms of how differing body types can are still like all beautiful and lastly there was the scene towards the end where they're in the sister's factory and Anna just gets really hot and so she takes off her shirt and her mom gets really really upset and she's just like put your shirt back on aren't you embarrassed like you look horrible like basically calling her disgusting and so it like kind of sent them down a tangent though where everybody else in the workshop including her older sister kind of defended her without getting angry they just got really passionate about pointing out things on their bodies that other people have told them are gross and disgusting but um it really highlighted how the smallest girl in the group who was calling herself um a cow it then made somebody else go like well if you're a cow I'm a hippo and then another girl goes like well if you're a hippo then I'm an orca so everybody's only it was just really an important like point to me just in terms of like how comparison can just kill joy and they kind of took it back in that moment within comparing their bodies um just highlighting like yeah somebody's always going to be smaller than somebody else and that you're always going to also be bigger than another body and that's okay and it was just like me being somebody personally who has like struggled with certain things that would be considered like bodily imperfections to see them they're basically like stripping down and just pointing out to each other not like a oh look how gross or like oh my god I can't believe yours looks like that but just kind of like a oh, look at that, we can all somewhat relate on this level even though none of our bodies are fully the same because they're showing um, they're showing that they have um, cellulite on their bodies or stretch marks and it was just more of like a beautiful like united moment. So yeah, that was like the last moment for um, that I noticed in terms of stereotypes of gender, sexuality, just showing that that's... Um, highlighting that that's not necessarily the point or like the epitome of their value or their worth that yes they are beautiful on the outside regardless of how they look they also um a point that Anna tried to hit home um the entire movie was that she just wanted to be taken more seriously for her mind than her physical presence to which her mom was like thoughts ideas which I was like that might be a little I don't know anybody who actually talks like that but, uh, yeah, that was majority of the things that I noticed. And, yeah, that's about it. Sorry, I'm having a hard time wrapping this up. But all in all, I thought it was a good movie. Um, again, I really appreciated what I perceive to be the diversity in perspectives that you can have. And at the end of the movie, she does wind up going to college and... Um, I think she gets confronted a little bit with the fact of how much it bothered her and broke her heart that um, she didn't get her mom's blessing, but she still went because it was more so what she needed to do on her personal journey, and so there really isn't any resolution at the end in terms of like that relationship or her coming full circle back to her family or anything, but um, I still think that that was okay because it just made it feel more real life and um the rest of her story is just yet to be written and that's the point so yeah that's all I have to share